Hey, I'm Steve Hefter for Rock Roots and Blues Live here with the amazing Mr. Matt Schofield. How you doing, Steve? Good, Matt. Thanks. I appreciate you taking a few minutes after the show. All the right. The show is killer. Thank you. All nice and sweaty and uh, worn out now. Yeah, I'm Please. used to doing these after the show, but it works. That's the way we had to roll today. It's been uh, one of those days. Well, I'm yeah. used to bouncing around, you know, whatever you guys need. Yeah. So it's been a few uh, years since we actually chatted. Yeah, I think so. Uh, probably, yeah, maybe three, something like that. Was yeah, it? so what's been going on? Uh, more of the same, really. <laughs> Driving around like an idiot, playing music, <laughs> trying to play music. Well, you moved, though. Uh, I mean, I've been uh, based out of South Florida for actually it'll be five years in December now. Oh, so, wow. um, so um, yeah, time flies, you yeah. know. Uh, and um, uh, but then the funny thing is, the last couple of years I've been back to Europe more than ever. So <laughs> one of those things. So, so how I, do you like South Florida? It's great, you know. Um, it's a nice place to live. I don't, I don't even play there that much, you know. It's I. Uh, I go back there in between doing other things, you know, so uh, um, so it's always nice, especially winter. Now it's screaming hot. Oh, so. yeah. But uh, having spent a lot of time in Canada previously, um, it's, uh, I, I was happy to not see any snow ever again. So. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting that way too. Yeah. The older you get, I think you'll find the more you feel that way. Well, I already do, so yeah. So. Cool. So you got a new album coming out soon? Yeah, actually, we we recorded most of it last May, you know, so it's just been kind of trying to uh, cross the T's and dot the I's on some stuff, uh, industry-wise, and uh, and then, you know, I, it was like, oh, I got really busy after we st did the basic track, so then I had to sing it, and then, uh, so start doing that, and then get busy again, and then, like, a bunch of times back. I, uh, basically, you learn that... Um, you got to stay on it with the project because the longer it drags on, the harder it is to, to finish it up. So we just need to mix it now. Yeah. Um, so it's it's trying to get that kind of um, figured out in between making a living, really. So you have to go back and make a living. And so I left my previous label last year. Uh, so we're doing this one all ourselves. Totally yeah, I, I mean, w when it's done, we might see what some people think of it. But I didn't want to be at the mercy of anybody, and uh, um, a very dear friend of mine um, contributed uh, an initial funding uh, type um, thing to, uh, I mean, modest by record industry standards, but uh, gratefully uh, well, welcomed by me, you know. Yeah. So uh, uh, it d has enabled us to pursue it in that way, you know. Great. So. Uh, um, so that yeah, we've just been doing it like that because um, you know now you have to uh, like in the old days you would make a record and that would be part of earning a living you know, whereas now it's like when you go and make a record you actually have to stop making a living for a while and dedicate that time to doing something that you're not going to get a return on on a record anymore. They're all sunken costs, you know. Like if you make your money back on what you spent on an album, then you then that's good, you know. So you're not actually going to generate income from right. it because there's just no income from making recordings anymore. Right. Um, so stupid question: Why do you do it? Because you have to. Because I can't get. I mean, the, the bookings slow up until you have a new release. So you're kind of caught in this cycle, you know. So you got to put a new album out to get the gigs, um, but you got to keep gigging to be able to afford to make the album and and vicious. pretty vicious cycle. Yeah. So yeah. Um, is this album different than uh, the previous? Uh, this is the, uh, the, the uh, first record with my original organ trio, actually. So it's Johnny Henderson oh, yeah. and Evan Jenkins. So it, because it was, uh, well, when we recorded last year, it was 15 years since we did our first little live album. And this year is 15 years since we did our first studio record. Um, no, that'll be next year, actually. It was 2005 so yeah 15 years this year since the first studio record came, uh, live album came out gotcha. so basically 15 years since we started since I had a solo career right. um, and I didn't know what to do and um, you know um, I think I, I thought at this point I'd have like a nice big band like BB King but I don't nobody can afford it uh, so I um, 
went back to where I started in the first place. So um, I just played with uh, Johnny and Evan last weekend as well. So, oh, really? Um, which, is, which is really great. So, um, where was that? Uh, in Holland. We did uh, some shows out there. So we do that whenever we can, and I'll, I'll be back playing with them uh, next month in Italy and Edinburgh. So um, we still do that when we can. Johnny's a father of two now, so it's a little more tricky for him to get away. Sure, yeah. Um, but you can get them into all these other countries and it's just too expensive to bring them over here? Or? Basically, yeah. That's insane. They're, this is the only country I have to get like and spend months making a, a visa application for and then pay an immigration lawyer to do it and wow. stuff. Yeah, we a lot of people that. don't realize that. Yeah, I mean, if I could just bring him over for the weekend, he'd come and we'd do it. But I'd have to spend, you know, Lots. thousands of dollars to, yeah. to have him. And then if he's not going to do everything all the time then it's not worth the the expenditure so that that's the reality of of uh, yeah. being a touring musician well so. you're overseas enough where you get to see him and yes yeah, so we do yeah we do it whenever we can and that's been the same for everybody that i work with you know so cool i mean i'm glad you're getting to play with him yeah yeah me too yeah and they love you overseas well they do maybe in uh not so much in uh it's hard to get booked in the UK, but um, we've got some kind of little backing track going on. Yeah, he's doing his job, man. And uh, yeah, we got. Um, but I've been going to Italy lots, Holland lots, and I think I went to like 13 different countries last year. So wow. not so much the UK though. But uh, that's the hard, funnily enough, that's the hardest place for me to get. A, decent gig these days. But. So tell me about the band today. I haven't seen this. Uh... Hey, okay, yeah. So we did this last year here at the Iridium. Uh, and so we like took it up a notch tonight as well. So um, yeah, uh, so <clears throat> Raul Valdez on drums. I've known Raul. I've known of Raul for a long time. Um, and then I've known him since uh, I moved to South Florida there. He, um, uh, has been with Lucky Peterson for oh, probably a decade. And so when I met him, I knew of him already through mutual friends. And we started hanging out, and he was touring with Lucky. But we'd hang out in Florida, catch up when he was back, when I was back, whatever. We just became friends. And he's like, man, you got to hear uh, Tim Waits that plays in Lucky's band. With, and so they've been a rhythm section for a decade. So uh, I was up here last year, and they were playing at um, the, the uh, Falcon in Marlborough. Okay. So we went over, and I was like, damn, OK, this is a rhythm section here. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we wanted to start doing something together. Um, and then um, uh, I'm trying to think. I think Christine recommended uh, Derby to me. So I should come to, well, Christine next, who uh, you know, I've been trying to involve Christine Tambakis, involve her increasingly in the music. Um, you know, she's my uh, my girlfriend, which is not a nice enough word sometimes. Uh, my partner, you know, or my um, significant other. Let's there you, see, go. you know, Perfectly girlfriend correct. sounds too light. You know, uh, would you know? So uh, she's my better half. And uh, but I don't. Oh, I also want to say she's only up there because she is uh, on on merit, not because of that. Oh, she's so, a phenomenal singer. So she's one of the best singers I uh, I've known and worked with. And so I started trying to involve her in it because I'm always going to be a guitarist who sings. Uh, and so if I put my ego aside, she's um, uh, she sings as good as I play guitar. You know, yeah. I'm always a guitarist who sings. So. Right. Uh, so I, uh, you know, if, if I try and think about what makes the overall uh, concert experience for a broader amount of people rather than just the guitar nerds, then um, uh, having her come up uh, is a no-brainer to me. So. so I started doing that. And then I think when we were doing the Iridium last year, it was Raoul and Tim. And they always, they have the house B3 here. So I'm like, well, somebody should play it. And uh, so I think Christine suggested Darby. He's from up in Massachusetts. Um, and so he came down and played, and uh, he's just fits in perfectly. You know, it's like um, probably um, 
the, the, the first of that kind of organ player I've had since Johnny, uh, you know, so right. he has a similar um, really supportive role and then when he takes a solo he's ripping a solo, so, uh, so it's great. And then uh, also Chelsea Barris that was with us tonight, um, Christine met on a gig, that she's based out of here in New York and uh, so uh, I heard her and I was like, well man, she can like blow because there's a lot of saxophone players who are just jazz saxophone players right but she can like play some blues on it as well and make it honking which i like but also has all the other stuff and that's kind of what my music's always been about it's like it's not just blues but you have to be able to play the blues so you can't just play all the other stuff right. if you can't if you don't really know how to get down and play the blues then you can't really do the gig um so there's a lot of people who can, these days who can play all the other stuff, but they don't really know about the blues. So that would be an explanation for everybody that's involved in the band, really, is they, you know, Raoul and Tim have been getting down there playing with Lucky Pearson for a decade, and they really know how to get those feels right. But also they're much broader than just that. So that would apply to everybody. So that, I think that's what's cool about this. And, you know, everybody's a similar sort of age within reason. Um, <laughs> I'm starting to become like one of the older guys in my band now. It was always the other way around. That's what happens when you don't die. Apparently so. Yeah, yeah. I'm older than most of my heroes ever made it to. You know, so <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So how has the whole uh, giving up the ego a little bit to the singer been working? It's great. I mean, like, I was always reluctant anyway. So I just do it as much as I like now. And, you know, I'm still like band leader back there, you know. So yeah. I'm like ca calling the shots. And, and then an and interesting thing is when quite often when Christine comes out and sings after I've done four or five songs of my own the first guitar solo I take after she's been singing gets the most recognition since maybe the first solo I took all evening because it like frames it differently right. so uh, maybe by the fifth song I've just been beating people over the head with loads of me <laughs> and so um, I just don't see uh, you know what's uh, it's it's just like more better. No yeah. downside. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So are you writing in between all this? Yeah, well, I mean, I wrote uh, most of the, the new trio records. Um, uh, you said records. Uh, yeah, well, most of the new trio record is okay. is uh, original stuff. There. No, but we're you know we're talking about doing something with this particular combination of people like a bigger thing, you know. Uh, maybe get another horn in as well uh, if you can make it work logistically and financially to to have that and I think you know these days we live in a visual world so it's hard for just a trio to headline a festival or something like that and if you look at what say uh, Derek and Susan have done with the 13 piece band but that's like it's very very smart if you make the choice at the right time when you can afford to do it then you you're coming up with like a festival headlining monster, you know, which you couldn't do with the trio. You could be Jimi Hendrix these days or Stevie Ray in Double Trouble. And you can't just go out with a trio that doesn't capture people's attention now. You need a lot of visual um, excitement, broadness, you know, yeah. it's like, it's not, it's not enough just to play really well. And you're trying to fill a stage that's yeah. one feet long or Yeah, whatever. it was enough when it was Hendrix, nobody had heard anything like that. But now everybody's heard everything, everybody's seen everything, so <laughs> it's a different sort of time. And so, um, yeah, it, you know. So you are writing some stuff for potentially this new, this new group? Uh, yeah, we're going to start on that next, you know. So, yeah, we might just do a bunch of tunes that we like already, but, yeah. Any plans to do more touring up and down the East Coast like you had been? Or? If, they, if it makes sense, that's basically it. You know, I've lost lots of money trying to do tours over the years. So. It seems to always come down to get the same answer, which is if the club's calling, they want to pay me what I think I need that, to that, make it work. That's what it is. And I'm not talking about a lot of money. I'm just talking about, like, this is what we do for a living. So, um, yeah, yeah. we got to get paid, you know. So where are you off to next? I know you're here tomorrow night doing two shows. Yeah, we'll do another night and then uh, uh, where are we off to next? I go to San Diego on Monday for the night and then back to do a clinic. And, uh, and then 
your next stop is a little quick stop in London for a guest spot and then like 10 days in Italy with a quick jump back to Edinburgh for the Edinburgh Jazz and Blues Festival and then back to Italy and then Pier Blues Festival in Belgium which is a big one and That's so be a blast, on, on and on and on yeah so yeah, yeah so um, and then August we'll see what happens then basically so cool, cool. yeah yeah you, so you're staying busy for sure yeah absolutely <laughs> Yeah, I mean, d just keep going, you know. So. Yeah, just keep rolling. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time, man. Thanks, mate. It was thanks. Good to catch up. With good to see you, and thanks for your support, as always. Oh, well, I'd love to be able to come out and see you more, but uh, yeah. I can't afford to get to Italy. <laughs> so. Yeah, man. Well, neither can I. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. Uh, I hope to talk to you again real soon. We'll see you soon. Thanks, yeah. man. Cheers, mate. All right, man. Thanks.